Hi all! Welcome to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, hello, welcome! Thank you for checking out my content again. So my name is Joanne and today we're going to be talking about the variegated string of hearts, which is this beautiful plant over here. This is one of my propagations. So you'll see here that it's a plant that grows on like these thin vines here and on each of them you'll see that it has like these heart shaped leaves on each side so you'll have like a pair of hearts every couple of inches or so. Today I'll be talking about things like your growing medium, water, light, and propagation. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoyed the show. The first thing I want to talk about is like how I first attained variegated string of hearts. So I got my mother plant over here about one and a half years ago in late 2020. And at that point, the prices for the variegated string of hearts plant was starting to come down, but it was still heavily inflated. So I don't know what the prices are whenever you're watching this, but for context at the beginning of the panini, single nodes of these plants were going for 10 to $20 per node, and those were often unrooted. So when a really good price came around, it was around $45 that I purchased my mother plant for, and it was in a three inch pot, and there were three semi longish rooted vines in the pot um, and I purchased that from a local plant store here in New York City. So the prices here in New York City were actually a little bit lower than national because you know people were still buying a lot of plants online. That was how much the variegated string of hearts cost for me and so my goal is really to like share this knowledge. I've had this plant for a year and a half now and it's growing about a foot every two to three months so i do have to cut it back a couple times i do plan to like eventually up pot it into like a larger pot maybe like a six inch pot and just wrap the vines around a little bit more to make it like a very full plant I'm going to talk about growing medium based upon two different scenarios so the first scenario is that you purchase an unrooted cutting of this plant and so you have to learn how to propagate it which you will learn at the end of this video but after you've propagated it, you've like rooted it up, what kind of medium should you pot this up in? I would recommend an airy medium, something like a cactus soil, but I would amend that even more depending on how often you water. So for me, I'm someone who underwaters, so that means that I have to add less perlite than if you're someone who like waters on schedule or maybe even over waters. Maybe you need to add more perlite. Um, so just definitely take that into consideration, like your watering needs. I would do like 60% cactus soil for me as someone who underwaters, then like 40% perlite, maybe a little bit of orchid bark just to like add some aeration in there. That is the medium that I would go with. I typically go with a plastic pot because again I underwater versus if you use something like a terracotta pot which wicks away moisture even faster you might need to water a little bit more frequently with that. That is if you need to pot up your cutting. If you purchased a plant and that is something that already exists with its given medium, right? You could purchase a plant that's like rooted in sphagnum moss. Um, you could purchase one that comes in like a three inch pot or like four inch pot. And those will usually have very heavy mixes. And it's also in plastic. It's not going to wick away that moisture like terracotta does. So if that's the case, I would not recommend repotting your plant right away, simply because variegated string of hearts as the plant structure is based off of something called a codex and codexes are similar to potatoes they're tubers in the soil that the vines grow out of and your job is to make sure that the codex is nice and healthy and it doesn't rot away so you would kind of treat it like a cactus in that you want to keep the soil a little bit on the drier side the codex also has like these roots but they're very very fine roots you could have an extremely long vine and like very little roots on the actual 
um, codex itself. So if you were to disturb that for that plant, you're probably going to put the plant into shock or you could really heavily hurt the codex and, you know, it might not be easy for you to bounce back after that. So I would definitely not recommend messing around with the soil or the roots if you've already purchased something. You could definitely like try to pull it out of the plastic pot and put it in terracotta, but like one issue that I've experienced that I don't know if anyone else experiences this is that if you put a really heavy mix into terracotta, like it kind of throws you off mentally with like when you're gonna water this because it's still like wicking away all that moisture but the center of that plant is still very moist. It's not exactly like evenly dispersed throughout the plant. Next, we're gonna talk about watering. So for me, what I look for when it comes to watering my plant is not time because throughout the year your plant is going to be getting different lighting depending on where you are. I live in New York City so like it's a temperate climate here and that means that we get all four seasons and that also means that we get varied amounts of light throughout the year. December is not going to be the same as like June in terms of watering so what I typically look for is if the plant passes the taco test and you have to be careful with something called the taco test which is where like if the leaves are kind of bendy because you want to check the the leaves that are a little bit more full and not innately flimsy so things like the newer growth the leaves are going to be much flimsier versus like any of the more mature growth up here i would usually check for the hearts up here if they're still like firm then I don't water. You don't want to overwater this plant at all. Another thing is like I will lift up the pot and with a plastic pot you can kind of see at the bottom that the soil is still moist down there. So this plant does not need water at all um, and it's fine. It's doing great and I think last time I watered it was like three three, four weeks ago. So it's definitely a lower maintenance plant if you're someone who doesn't like to water. And now we're gonna move into lighting. So my plant sits between two um, southeast facing windows, but it like directly in front of the plant, there's kind of like this column of wall. Um, and that that's great because it means that my plant is not getting direct light. So my windows have a tendency to be very strong. I think like they don't have much obstruction and it's also a southeast facing window so it gets very warm and also very bright in here. You'll notice certain signs when it comes to how much light your variegated string of hearts is getting. So if you want more pink like very, very pink hearts, then you should give it more light. So if you notice on like this older growth right here, I used to have very small hearts and I was always wondering like, what is it? Like, am I underwatering? Am I overwatering? Like, why am I not getting these big juicy hearts that I had up here from the original growth? And now the reason for that, oh my gosh, I just got my plants tangled. You do not want that because it is always the worst when you have to untangle a string of hearts. So I always wonder like, why do I keep getting like super small hearts? And the reason why you get that is because your plant is getting a lot of light. And so you'll notice with sun stressing that a lot of plants typically start to grow smaller leaves. I like to keep it in bright indirect lighting. I feel like bright indirect lighting is the most like, difficult lighting to actually define because everyone's lighting conditions are different. So I like to just look at the plant and see like what it's telling me and then I'll like adjust as necessary. So for this one, I wanted to have more of this like white and green variegation instead of the sun stressed pink. And you'll notice that this one has pretty big hearts. And the reason why it has that is because it actually is getting less light but as a result of that you kind of want to be careful because if it's getting less light it means you need to provide less water this also means that if you want to give your plant more light and you want to have like those very like 
precise pink hearts, you need to water more frequently. Otherwise, you could potentially underwater and then your plant starts to go bald. That's an issue that I was starting to get for my mother plant. And then finally, we are going to talk about propagation. So I propagated this pot. Hearts are super small, but I feel like that's usually what happens when you propagate um, one leaf cuttings. So it's actually pretty simple to propagate variegated string of hearts. Actually, that's a lie. It's a hit or miss. <laughs> so there are a couple different methods for propagating variegated string of hearts. You could do water propagation where you take a long cutting and you cut off some of the bottom leaves and stick that in a very, very small glass of water. And that way you can start growing those roots in the plant. Another thing is to do soil propagation. So if you literally just like lay it on top of soil and then um, keep an eye on it and water it a little bit more frequently and eventually it's going to grow roots for you. I think the lowest maintenance way of rooting your variegated string of hearts is through the butterfly method. And this one is where you take a pretty long cutting of your variegated string of hearts and you cut that down into single node pieces but you want to trim down the actual vine itself this is a butterfly cutting and you'll notice here that i've trimmed back the stems pretty decently because usually there's like one to two inches between each of the nodes you don't want that much on your nodes so i just cut that back then you're going to let that callus, I leave it to dry out pretty much overnight. Like it's fine if you leave it to dry that long because these leaves are very succulent. And then I just place them in this Tupperware. Sometimes the leaves will just rot off, but as long as you still have that node, you're gonna be fine because that node is what starts developing those like baby codexes. They're so cute. So I just laid some moist soil at the bottom of this container and I closed it up and the soil will generally stay moist so that I only have to water maybe once every two weeks, if anything, and that would just be like a light spritz. And then you just wait. It's going to take a pretty long time. Like for me, I think I propagated this, oh my gosh, like in, in September. <laughs> And then I only recently took it out of this container and potted it up in this pot. If you water propagate, it's probably going to take a shorter amount of time to, de to develop the roots. But I've also noticed that when you water propagate, it's not going to produce a codex as quickly as if you, um, versus if you do the butterfly method. So hopefully that provided some context into how you can grow variegated string of hearts. And another thing to note is that sometimes like the bottom leaves are going to die. It's fine. As long as you cut back the plant, it's going to start developing new vines. And sometimes if I cut it back once, I end up like having that specific vine develop three different vines from that cut. So don't worry about like your plant going bald or anything because all you can do is just wrap around more vines at the top and you'll be fine. Yeah, so hopefully this was a good amount of context. This is like my favorite plant ever. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and we can maybe troubleshoot together on like what's going on with your variegated string of hearts. Plant Instagram is joanne.grows. I don't usually post as often because I just get overwhelmed with social media sometimes, but I always answer pings there. So yeah, feel free to check out my Instagram and I hope y'all will have a wonderful day and let's hope 2022 is going to be an amazing year. I appreciate you for watching this video and I will see y'all next time. Bye!